Hey everyone, and thank you so much for coming out this evening. We are super, super, super excited to be gathered here to celebrate this incredible debut collection from Alexa Patrick called Remedies for Disappearing. We've got an amazing lineup of poets to share in this celebration. My name is Erica Foreman. Um, I am a publicist for Haymarket Poetry. Um, and I just can't say enough, 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 enough good things about this book. So just a little bit of why we're gathered here again. Um, Remedies for Disappearing is a gritty, sharp, and formally inventive book of poems demonstrating Patrick's imaginative curiosity, lyrical restraint, and confidence in her handling of language. Moments of aphoristic confession are balanced with imagistic precision as the speaker recounts the ways her aunties, her sisters, and even herself have disappeared in order to survive. Patrick's poetry is haunting and hopeful, striving to provide readers with the tools and context to acknowledge, define, and honor the complexity of Black girl and Black womanhood. Remedies for Disappearing connects Black girls and women to each other and to their own histories and insists that they be fully and wholly seen. You can feel free, as you should, to purchase Remedies for Disappearing at haymarketbooks.org, as well as support any of your independent and local booksellers. Um, and what's nearly exciting, almost as exciting, is hearing Alexa be able to read her poems tonight. We're also joined by the following poets and artists and thinkers and people who are out in the world um, shaping it with language in ways that continue to inspire, including Reina Leon, Jasmine Manns, Gabriel Ramirez, and Kush Thompson. Um, so we're going to kick it off with those incredible little seeds of anticipation for y'all to get excited about. But in order for us to start off, we're going to start off with the first poet, who is Reina Leon, who is a teacher writer, artist, curator, scholar, and mother. You might know her as a founding editor of the Ascentos Review, the author of Black God Mother This Body, which is an amazing title, and co-founder of Story Joy Incorporated with Dr. Norma Thomas, with whom she also hosts the podcast Generational Archives. She has received fellowships and residencies with McDowell, Cave Canem, Cantamundo, Obsidian, Carolina African American Writers Collective, Macondo, among others. She has recently received a NALAC Individual Artist Grant for her work with the Ascentos Review. She is starting an arts residency in Italy, and she's already there, so check off that list. Um, for Black, Indigenous, and other folks of the Global South creators, educators, healers, and activists to breathe deeply and maybe create. I'm so excited to hear these poems. So without further ado, welcome, Reina Leon. I am so delighted to be with you all. Um, I, and to have had this welcome to be with you to celebrate this book, which is a majesty, the the from the cover, which is just so like invitational and vibrant to the poems themselves that sing and cut and, and dig deep. Um, Alexa, I'm so honored and so um, celebratory. I celebrate you so much. This is such an incredible um, work. And um, yeah, uh, from group E to, to here, um, from the City and Foundation, we've been a part of this collective um, for two years now, two years and some change. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> um, and like continuing to, to build with one another. And that's your whole ethos of like continuing to build and offering such great um, joy and artistic practice and and craft and innovation and vision. So to be here to, to celebrate with you is, is absolutely a delight. Um, and, you know, I checked in with you about uh, sharing a poem from the book and I don't know, I, I think that there's something about hearing your words in the in the tones of someone else. And I know that your 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 works will be will be tattooed on the bodies of others, right? Um, that, that there are lines that will resonate so deeply in the souls of people that they will want to, to walk in the world with them. Um, and so hearing them, perhaps one poem, and another's voice is, is one step in that way. So I wanted to read your poem too much first 
and then share some poems and then delight in, in all those who will come. Too Much from Remedies for Disappearing by Alexa Patrick. When held right, it is a weapon and I am 14 again. Thighs already rubbed holes in the good genes. Bright red braces offensive, making stop signs of every tooth, stretching gaps until my mouth is more machine than human. When I smile, wielding both rows of teeth, wear the clothes the rest of me has not yet swallowed, the pale-necked boys, the ponytail pendulum girls, cringe at the gesture's persistent grind. I have since only attempted quiet, allowed my limbs a smaller radius, become subtler target, but my eyes are loud with their dark hair, curls, obnoxious, everything about me claps. Can something vast be wounded? No. A bullet in the sky is only a warning. Smoke like futile breath wheezes out the barrel. Look, your hair sticks out. Look, your purple elbows, your fat thighs, look. I'm mighty myself. Let my joy bark, uncross legs, laugh until even the hurt burns. I'm so big, they keep shooting. Tongues cocked, but I'm ready. Hair tangled like a netting, eyes wing-tipped hazardous. I walk into rooms already flexing in armor. I swell before they try, smiling with both rows of teeth. That armor, that armor. And I, I love seeing the, the reactions of those who are gathered and like, Christian losing it, <laughs> that poem, right? Um, so I read some, some poems um, in that space of also the vigilante auntie. This is an excerpt. There is a moment that I never forget. I am at my grandmother's house in the projects in Philadelphia. There's a perpetual scent of arroz con gandules in the air, as there always seems to be in a Boricua house. There are women, Titi, my grandmother, my mother. I have this feeling that my grandfather is there too, but his form is a shadow at vision's edge. Merengue plays, and Titi says to me, do you know how to dance merengue? It's just like walking, one, two. And she rises from a patterned couch to dance, and then her arms reach down to hold me. Though I cannot walk, I dance. Her hands keep me in balance. Band portrait in the MAGA area on returning to the United States after the piece Eight Arrests in Places Unknown from 2014, Ruby on Yinyechi Amanze. We wake with dawn, jet lag, the frailty of our thin forms in and out of time. Just days ago, our minds electrified, bursting between, beneath fireworks while here plants sunlays. And now we are opposite. Beneath eye weights so heavy though sun seeps as carmine staining light on a poet's page that I signal with simple words, kind of bloodline. In twilight we find a new lust fever and bemoan our amiable couch fight while watching Netflix to stay awake. But rest is not for here or now when the cleavers descend on black dead and hold a treason trial, unstarted, acquittal, surety, I dream, loving, depressed. In this poem, Hypatia teaches um, that they come for the women who know. Hypatia um, was a philosopher um, who had um, a vibrant career in, in Alexandria when the, the libraries of Alexandria were vibrant and a figure who um, was unfortunately um, flayed alive because of her um, her knowledge because of what she knew and, and how she was perceived by others. Serapis, this meter pock bleeds a fire. You stitch. How this pink colors into earth. Hair prickles slow. The mob peels my virtue, patient in torture, twist smiles and silver rings. Serapis, pray me, daughter again. Was it my skin that called their cu cutting oyster shells? Icomeros, plain thin, to papyrus 
tone flesh soak the flap for three days, a layered resurrection. I die for vellum carved to my voice. To know the law is to write on still throbbing tendon. Father, roof tiles for sheaves and all my letters whirl me numb. What does a girl know of suffering? Never felt her brown skin scroll unspooled for flick flame eyes, not even a spit rain reprieve. Animals. Serapis, see here, years I labored with why, chisels on river-worn stone. Alexandria, law, sharp teething, I never wanted my animal to rule, rune, ink carve, chip archive, stain heel, mage, someone is dead. So many someones. Start a library to know, or just be a woman who speaks. And this last poem, Hover. Um, the only thing that you need to know is that my son, when he was a little one, really loved punk, um, punk music, t punk rock toddler. It was like a hashtag, punk rock twos. Um, and he would sing these punk songs or like create his own. And he was so fascinated by um, helicottero, um, like a helicopter, helicopters um, in Italian. So he would scream that out. And this poem is also set um when so much was happening in California, including the times after um, the killing of George Floyd. Um, hover. Above us, there are no helicopters. Not like when the wind smelled like California soot and every hour sirens wove their hair into hours and sung names to enchant cacophony. Say their names and we were home, your sister newborn in my arms, protecting her life a protest. Weeks before, each time a plane scored the Berkeley sky in white, you would point up, say, Mama, because I am always in the sky, even when my skin burns in the sun next to yours. How my eyes leak with storms you cannot yet name. We stand in unhinged weather. There are no helicopters today. You bang on a wheelbarrow with dried bamboo stalks as drumsticks and lift your toddler throat up to shout, Goto! Over and over again, a screamo chorus, lyrics perfectly formed to your ears. I nod only, yes, <laughs> and keep beat. At the People's Park, marchers assemble with banners of I can't breathe. San Pablo, I hear the horns of a car parade inside the mourner shout behind masks from open windows while a virus flies around us all. Pandemic in crown and white, surrounded by fences, I can keep you safe and breathing until I can't. Every door has the threat of splinter. There are no helicopters today. Kota! You yell. Somewhere they descend. Somewhere a body hangs, halfway between metal and earth. I'm so honored to be with you, Alexa. Your work is just phenomenal. Thank you for for allowing me to share this this night with you. Y'all, my heart, please give it up one more time, two more times, three more times for Raina Leong. Please, please, please. We are going off back here where y'all can't see. Y'all need to give it up in the chat. This is also a perfect reminder to um, the lineage of the griots and the poets that the poets have historically also been a part of the citizenry, right? And so we carry the archive, we carry the history, we carry the legacies, we carry a lot of important critical gems that help us to keep reimagining towards a better future. So thank you so much, Raina. Those were a beautiful way to open up the space. Um, I got my little notes in the marginalia on my little cheat sheet over here, but we are going to go ahead and keep it moving on to our next reader, who is Jasmine Mann. who is a black poet and performance artist from Newark, New Jersey. Jasmine's poetry book, Black Girl Call Home, has been named one of Oprah's most anticipated LGBTQ books in a Time magazine must read, just to name a few. And Jasmine herself named as Essence's number one contemporary black poet to know. 
Jasmine most recently collaborated with the Brooklyn Ballet on an original performance piece titled Unnatural Surrounding at the prestigious Brooklyn Academy of Music. Um, I appreciate Jasmine's poems, but most importantly, I appreciate just her voice in the world, how she's able to utilize art and language to critically sort of help us move through and pass the BS so that we can get to the real work that we need to do. So um, give another round of applause and a warm welcome, please, to Ms. Jasmine Mans. I was gonna like start off like super deep, but I was like, oh my gosh, what a pleasure it is to be amongst you beautiful people. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting Alexa um, after Kevin Koval came to my house and said, there's this woman that you must meet. And we met here in North Alexa and you've been a sister ever since. And we talked about this moment actually of your book coming into the world and, and now it's here. And, and I'm so honored to be in support of you, in support of this glorious moment that you will remember forever. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful that, that I'm a part of the, the beautiful artists who are ushering this moment in for you. So thank you tremendously for having me. Um, got some poems for y'all. How do you tell a woman that raising a black son isn't some type of inside joke crafted by God and some white man? Can you prove to me that they are not in heaven, snickering at the souls of a single parent mother, dressing her son up for graduation, hoping he can make it across the stage, down the aisle or off the balcony quick enough to not get caught in his skin at the wrong time? I've touched the bellies of mothers who have boarded black boys like thrown overboard slaves who will look you in the eyes like a bluebird awakening to a holocaust and whisper, I'm just afraid to raise a black son. A black boy is just a trembling soul suffocating in a fabric that always seemed to make you scratch around your neck. The tag that always seemed to make you itch around your noose collar. How can you tell a mother holding her son in a delivery room, praying that his skin doesn't get any darker, hoping that it stays as light and deceiving as a sunrise in the ghetto that her son isn't some white man's pit stop, that her son's body isn't a chamber for some bigot to store his sin in Southern accent, and that her son isn't some colored toy for the rich blue-eyed boys. I'm just afraid to raise a black son who will spend the rest of his life praying for a melody or a melanin safe enough to scream in. A son who has to be a martyr for a war that he ain't ever asked for. Birmingham. Mama said the bomb wasn't meant for me. I think it was meant for Pastor Martin because he be having them dreams. Maybe those white men didn't know that little black girls, we be going to church too. And we be folding our hands and we be praying and we be taking communion just like their daughters do. Maybe if I wore my church shoes, the bad men would have never came for me. I knew they matched my dress, but they always just be hurt in my feet. I be thinking, did God christen the bombs that exploded my flesh into sacrifice? And do anybody be hearing them sacrificial scriptures spoken in tongues claiming Christ before everything went boom? Before the smoke and rubble baptized these collapsing bones? Maybe if they knew that we were like the most beautiful flowers. Right before the wind and the dirt began playing tug of war with the most delicate of our petals. Mama said it only took one man to die for the sins of this entire world. So how did that man let this church tremble on my soul? And I don't remember there being enough holy water to stop the smoke or to calm the burning. Mama said some heartbreaks just be too hard to swallow at communion. 
that some serpents be finding salvation in baptismal pools, that some church mice be screaming America's dirty little secrets. Mama said that some deaths just be too black and too white to be labeled holy that some sacrifice comes without permission, that some sacrifice comes without fair warning, that God can't always protect you from the boogeyman so some baby girls will reach the pearly gates and they won't be tall enough to turn the handle. Mama said, some men, some men will be too guilty to ever claim their innocence with Christ. But what did I do? I never wanted to play with the white girls. I never asked for integration. I wanted roller skates, maybe an extra piece of cake after dinner time. Sometimes I'd be thinking like maybe God was too busy trying to protect Martin to think about us. I never asked for that man's dream. But mama, mama just keeps saying that his dream just been asking for me. I have this piece called Footnotes for Kanye I'd like to do. I haven't done it in a while, so I'm gonna turn to that page and, and hope for the best. You look hungry. Like that girl don't make you no fried chicken or macaroni and cheese. Like she don't feel you on the inside. Like you haven't had a home cooked meal since your mama died. You look like you lost the song in your own song. Like you want to talk to God, but you're free because y'all ain't spoken so long. Do you tell your daughter about me? How we were bittersweet to never mess with entertainers because they always leave. That he'll get on and he'll leave your ass for a white girl and he'll give her your style your language, your waist, damn near try to give her your face. And somewhere in his post-traumatic twisted fantasy, he'll make it all okay. But what's the worth in loving a man who's lost his smile anyway? When Kim fucks up the lyrics of the college dropout like them white folks used to fuck up your name, do you pretend not to notice? Do you regret the Marilyn Monroe in your decision and wish you could have taken Billie Holiday as your bride? Do you ever want to run back to your wedding day and have it all over on the south side? Do you, do you wake up in the middle of the night and just think that, that she wasn't the right girl? Like, like maybe you should have found one of them I like art type girls. Can you hear all the black kids calling your name? Wondering why the boy who rapped about his mama getting arrested for the sit-ins didn't sit in. Why he traded in his Nat Turner for Ralph Lauren. Do you know how many kids at the protest had your sneakers on? None of them. Do you know how many of your songs were played at the protest? All of them. Could you hear all of the lights, the flashing lights, the new slaves, the runaways on their road to redemption, waiting for Kanye West to have the whole world at his attention? Oh, nigga, they got you quiet. Like, how come only at award shows he riots? Maybe Jesus was all talk. Jesus never needed Adidas to walk. Why is he outlining sneakers when the South Side is outlined in chalk? Can someone go and find the man who can make a diamond with his own bare hands? We are looking for you. Because these kids still want to be just like you. They want to rap and make soul beach just like you even though you just not you, even though you traded in your spaceship to buy back your 40 acres and a mule, purchase the plantation and master's daughters too. Nigga, why you got these white folks claiming you? Like they built you, like they made you, like they polished you, like they, like they ready them a good nigga for the picking, like, like they got you for sale. Oh, how they love Kanye. Let's, let's put them all in front of the store, like, like you there, black boy. You forgot you, black boy. They got you lost in this world. You getting blackmailed for that white girl. You don't see how your lies is affecting me. You don't see how our lives were supposed to be. 
and I never let a nigga get that close to me. And you ain't cracked up to what you were supposed to be. I guess it's bittersweet poetry. For my last poem. This is called The 39 Bus Makes Stops in the South Ward because I'm from Newark, New Jersey. I know that Gloria Brown lives on South Ward Team Street in the South Ward. She served as a lunch lady at George Washington Carver Elementary School before she retired. At 12 p.m. every day, she gave Calvin Chambers an extra milk with his lunch because that was my little brother's best friend and our next door neighbor. She fed Calvin until he was old enough to go to high school. His older brother, Al Tariq, died somewhere in a high-speed police chase on his motorcycle. His, his funeral was held at Cotton. Bergen Street stands like an old man who was an artist back in the day, but has since painted his kidneys a whiskey color. Round round here, you don't need to be Muslim to say assalamu alaikum because when you walk into King's restaurant, there'll be a four foot 11 black woman who's gonna ask you for your God and your order. And she don't care if you've made up your mind. You only got 10 seconds to respond with assalamu alaikum, my sister. I'll go with catfish, cheese eggs, cheese grits, wheat toast, butter and jelly, and an uptown, please. See, I come from a city that always had enough home to come home to. A city that sometimes only responds to its Muslim name. A city that rolls its eyes and holds its babies tight on the 27 bus because it's going to be four more months before mama gets a new car. So back door bus driver, back door, we got places to go. The source of knowledge bookstore be the only black bookstore downtown. And they're going to tell you about Broad Street before all of them white folks got here. The summer 2023 and all of Benet and Tyrone's three black kids graduated from college. They keep their degrees in a china cabinet and when they cook, they wear one of those, my baby went to a good school t-shirts. There's a mother in a West Ward praying her child through college. And sometimes she'll sing it, but other times she'll scream it. But that prayer is going to last her all of the days of her life. And the water ain't clean here, but Auntie Joyce is. And she's been clean for a minute now. She got an apartment and she sees her grandbabies every weekend. And, and the Leslie Street Block Association, they still have block parties. They be a group of old black folks who never got too scared of their grandbabies to celebrate them or to pray for them. So Ms. Shorter gonna have a cookout. Keisha gonna have a cookout. Uncle Charlie going to have a cookout and you ain't going to worry about the roaches because mama said everybody going to stay in that room. She don't want to hear nobody move a muscle or lift a finger until she say so. And the street going to be blocked off and the people going to dance and, and then are going to listen to trap music because all of her grandbabies are in the same backyard at the same time. And the electric slide is going to come on and the people are going to dance and your daddy, he's going to bring you your new bike and he's going to promise to never leave. And it's going to be 8 p.m. until the sun comes up and, and Nana made potato salad, y'all. She made potato salad and she mixed it with her whole arm. So you better stop by here now. You better stop by here and come get you a plate. Alexa. It is my pleasure. Y'all, y'all. <laughs> Please give it up all the times, all the times for that suite of jubilation of, uh, we can get into the, the nomenclature around black, black excellence, but whatever. Uh, all of the things that make us love and hum and as Raina put earlier, sing and cut and dig deep just everything i'm so 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 grateful for those poems thank you so much jasmine just reminding folks in the chat i know you can't be behind the scenes with us with the digital love um so make your own love in the chat like you can do that keep the energy going for these incredible poems and this incredible celebration be sure to like the video while you're watching it be sure to share the link to the video while you're watching it. This is also going to be permanently in our Haymarket archive of events. And so continue to share these incredible words um, as we move on to our next reader. Also, just a quick mention, if there are any questions 
about any of these incredible poems because you had the opportunity to read them before today's event. If you have any questions for the author, for any of our readers, feel free to drop them in the chat. And if we have time, we'll make some space to, to um, make sure that we are able to engage with one another across these digital little fiber optics. All right. All right. So our next incredible poet is going to be Gabriel Ramirez, a queer Afro-Latinx poet and teaching artist who has received fellowships from Palm Beach Poetry Festival, The Watering Hole, The Conversation Literary Arts Festival, Cantamundo, Miami Book Fair, and a participant in the Callaloo Writers Workshop. You can find his work in publications like The Volta, Split This Rock, Vinyl, Ascentos Review, as well as Bettering American Poetry Anthology, What Saves Us, Poems of Empathy and Outrage in the Age of Trump and the Breakbeat Poets, Volume 4, Latinx. It is my esteemed pleasure and honor to bring Gabriel and their poems to the space. I appreciate you and I'll kick it off to you. Y'all got me blushing already. I don't know how I'm, I'm just going to blush. That's my set. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. OK, so um, I've I've learned um, the the best way for me to breathe is to be very head ass about how much I love my folk. Right. Um, so um, I definitely dug up all the dates. <laughs> through me and Alexa's messaging. And uh, just want to say August, uh, Alexa, you were there. August 18th, 2019 was when Alexa and I met in person for the first time, exchanged words for the first time, and we were featuring together for a Split This Rock event. And um, yeah, I was like, so clearly, uh, I have a best friend, um, someone who's been my best friend since I was born and just haven't met them yet. Um, uh, past life best friend, like, you know what I mean? Like, um, and uh, I feel like, you know, if you just looked up Alexa Patrick in the dictionary, it would just redefine everything we understood uh, about friendship, love, wealth, vitality, you know what I mean? I mean, Skin glowing forever. It's impossible, you know what I mean, to be dull. Like, around Alexa, for Alexa to be dull, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So we just we just going to read these poems. And I have uh, two more dates to share after uh, or before the next two poems. Okay. <clears throat> that was just the first one, you know what I mean? Um, okay. <sighs> yeah, the banter is going to be cute, the poems. Whoop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Pops dead four months. Remembering Pops taught me to float on my back. Watching moonlight on my Delta flight after leaving Abuelana's casket with Abuelos in Santiago, Dominican Republic. I'd be lying if I didn't feel their hands stacked and securing my neck and spine. I got this ease with grief. Cry all I need to. Not all I want to. Deep breaths. Cups brimming with water. I feel furthest from Abuelo. The God I had then ain't the ancestors I have now. I keep baby's breaths for everyone I hold in the heaven of my brain, gorilla taped and lining the sarong my sister Monica gifted me. I tell you, a flower could be a casket. My therapist helps me see I got Things, things about family and consistency, how love should have and should look. Everything isn't my fault. I love people to see what brilliant light love could have made of me. All I am is from grief, defense mechanism, joy and smile and laugh and dance and hope. Thinking about getting a baby's breath tattooed under my eye, imagining how fresh it'll look every time I cry. Thinking about how it's been four months since pops died and the four ulcers they found in mommy's stomach the morning of Abuela Ana's viewing and how mommy couldn't come to Santiago to see her parents be together again. I tell you, if death isn't what makes a family. 
Um, so uh, we met in August 18th, 2019. And then, um, uh, Alexa, you were there. Um, it was uh, September uh, 12th, 2019, you know, uh, less than a month. And uh, you had uh, posted something about like your, your chat book. And I just sent like a heart eyes reaction, like asking if like there were people who wanted to read or like like give feedback. And I just sent like a heart eyes and you're like, does that mean you? And I was like, mm-hmm, <laughs> like, like that was my reaction. <laughs> and um, I remember reading it and I think when we talked, like when we kind of had like our little debrief, I was like, this is a book. <laughs> this, this is a chat book. This is also a book. Like, you know what I mean? Like the way you got the, oh, it's, it's, you're not even saying disappearing, but it's giving disappearing. You know what I mean? It's, it's giving healing. You know what I mean? Like when it came to like this Skype setup and they were like, do you have books that you could prop your laptop on? I was like, I'm going to just grab a bunch of craft books because Alexa finna teach us. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like, period. Like, um, so yeah, that was the second date. We got one more. Okay, here we go. Um, um, Abuelo, I couldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for you being dead. It was time for glitter, nail polish, and locks. Glitter in my nail polish, glitter in my locks. You wouldn't have loved me loving myself. My joy rendered inconvenience. Sucked teeth, keeping me your grandson. My love for the men in our family is complicated, but still love, still me accepting who they are, how they may not accept me, Abuelo. Show them the infinite possibilities tenderness allows. How the men in our family love, I would love to be loved by me. And I would be afraid to be loved by me. I'd say enough to keep, but never do enough to stay afraid to die alone like Pops did. Others' love for me has been what's left after forgiveness. I could have loved them better if I loved myself more. There's nothing I could hide from you, Abuelo. You are no longer of your prejudices, and while I can still hold you accountable, I'd rather be held by your body of stars, your new understanding of life without the exhaustion of matter. Abuelo, mommy says I look like you, but I want to look like a man who learned to forgive himself. Orchids blooming up my throat. No man wants to sound like who's abandoned them. What song made us ask the wrong questions? What joke made us laugh closing doors on our true selves? Who would relive the moments that shaped them into what they couldn't love? All my glitter and tenderness makes me only mother I won't get a chance to mourn. I carry my bright child face and tell myself, you will become me. Trust, baby boy. Everyone dies on time. And um, in February, uh, February 12th, 2021, um, the date that I have here is 2121, okay? Um, uh, Alexa was like, got some news. And I was like, what's the news? And then I just see like video notifications in my messages. And I was like, yes, hey market, let's go. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm so honored. I'm so thankful to be here. Alexa, I love you so, 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 so much. Um, whenever I like get a message from you, whenever, I see your words in the world when I listen when I when I hear you sing okay like y'all just y'all just get to read poems like you know what I mean like if, if you could open up the book and Alexa sing like <laughs> we're gonna have to figure that out um 
Yes, absolutely. But the voice, the voice of an angel, the words of an angel, just a deliverer of messages. I love you, sister, friend, homie. God bless you. I love you so much. Um, teacher. Okay, teacher. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, this poem's called Aurora Borealis. This is my last piece. So thank y'all. Thank y'all for being here uh, to celebrate Alexa. Um, also so hyped to hear Kush. You know what I mean? I already took off my socks after Reina and Jasmine. Like, I don't even know what to do. I'm gonna just take off this chain. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, okay. <clears throat> and thank you, Erica, of course. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Aurora Borealis. I imagine myself under those lights, a child with wide eyes full of those lights, spirit transcending the limits of bone, stretch out my hands trying to touch those lights, humbling vastness, remind me of who I am with an open heart reflecting those lights, a giggling river staying up all night, reflective brilliance learning those lights, waving orchestras of aquamarine, emerald jeweling my smile into those lights. River boy, stay cleansed by their ancestors, manifester, bathing crowns in those lights. Manifester, bathing crowns in those lights. River boy, stay cleansed by their ancestors, emerald jeweling my smile into those lights, waving orchestras of aquamarine, reflective brilliance learning those lights, a giggling river staying up all night with an open heart reflecting those lights, humbling vastness, remind me of who I am, stretch out my hands, trying to touch those lights, spirit transcending the limits of bone, a child with wide eyes full of those lights. I imagine myself under those lights. Would your imagination heal your inner child? Yeah. Thank y'all. Can we take a minute? Can we? Can we? <laughs> Alexa is saying, please, just a minute. When I say, what is all the tenderness and glitter to give me a mother I cannot mourn, I want to say, particularly during this Pride Month, particularly in this time, the ways that we mother ourselves, the ways that we mother one another. So tender mm -hmm. and so incredible. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel, for sharing those incredible poems with us. Who y'all? Gabriel then took off the socks. I got the goosebumps and the hair standing in on my arms and the back of my neck. But we gon' we gonna take that breath. <laughs> we are gonna continue to get into this incredible work. Um, and so I'm so delighted to welcome Kush Thompson uh, to our virtual stage, who is the author of A Church Beneath the Bulldozer. It was published in 2014 who is, lest we not forget, a Chicago-born poet, big up, big up, big up, painter, archivist, educator, and Cave Conum fellow, voted runner-up best local poet of 2014 by the Chicago Reader, a 2015 young futurist by The Root, because we do believe in futures and we believe in Black futures up in here, and a 2017 Pink Door and Luminarts Creative Writing Fellowship Thompson's contributed over a decade of performances and creative writing workshops, both nationally and internationally. Um, <laughs> I try not to do too many of the, the superlatives, but um, I'm going to take the key of being very head ass about my feels in that Kush, um, whose poems are very much about liberation and about dreaming. Um, and very much about liberation and not just an assumed freedom. And I learned so much from that work. I'm so in awe and in gratitude of that work. And I couldn't have asked for another contributing voice to this incredible chorus um, of poets. And so give it up all the times for Kush Thompson. No. <laughs> I want someone to put like a cardboard standing at me here <laughs> because me right now, I'm weeping. Like, Gabriel, he fucked me up. 
fuck me up. Like, okay, whatever. Um, thank y'all for having me. Like, I really don't feel like I'm in my living room right now. Like, I have been moved to a different realm, and I don't know how I'm going to re-enter my living room after this. Um, so thank y'all. Thank you, Erica, Jasmine, Gabriel, Raina, Alexa. It is such a treat to be here with y'all. The highest honor of my, what is this, Tuesday? The highest honor of my Tuesday, for real. Um, what? Alexa. <laughs> I was just thinking to myself of how collectively, in the years that I've known you, I've only been in space with you for a collective two weeks. Do you realize that? And it's crazy to me because I, I'm obsessed with you. I feel like Gabriel, like we have been best friends our entire lives, like group A, Cave Um, You were my best friend from the moment I met you and I, I can't get rid of you. I can't get enough of you. Thank you so much for being in my life. I would be so much more articulate right now if Gabriel didn't fuck me up. So thank you. Um, I'm just going to stick to what I know and read poems. Um, <clears throat> so I have poems. <sighs> okay. Um, the first poem I'm going to read, um, uh, on, on paper, it is a crossword puzzle. Um, in this state, it is, um, a poem on paper. Um, and it is a retelling of Alice in Wonderland that is dichotomizing, uh, the girlhoods that I grew up observing in suburban Southern California. All of the pieces that I am reading, <laughs> um, are based on Alexa's book, so... Yeah, twin and them. Um, the title uh, was given to us by the incredible Regina Hall um, in the movie, Scary Movie, two, three, two, three, two, four. Y'all know when you hear it. The title is <clears throat> Cindy the News is On and That Little White Girl Then Fell Down the Well. It begins with a quote. <laughs> I think that was Scary Movie, three. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Quote, and my disadvantage, nothing falls from the sky to name me, Tyrese Moss. Some girlhood, clumsy, tumble into, giggling, mirrors, world where she can sob locks apart, pass as garden despite the betraying paint. Sometimes girlhood, just a house playing tricks, zigzagged face, lips, nose, eyes gone, missing in the water. Behind every door, she is chewing through glass. All right, so this next portion um, are the word banks and their hints, so across. <clears throat> Some blonde princess trapped in sky dream, tears of rhinestone, girlhood, glitter, clots in strawberried sheen, skin like splattered snow globe, clumsy, someone watches her step for her, tumble into. White girls always arrive through some kind of hole, giggling, gel pen oiled loops, mirrors, another liquid doorway, world, collapsible dollhouse the size of her palm where she can, revisionist history in a game of curly tailed telephone, sob, skull of sunken cake snoring inside an easy bake oven, locks. She can't sit with us. Apart is how she spilled into the doorknob's mouth, pass as little girl, tall as serpent garden, where she comes to hear us sing in red, despite a hollow to cradle, the words she cannot sing with us, the betraying paint, a white rose all along, down. Sometimes girl is gone already. Girlhood, a fairy tale of erasure. 
just crescent teeth to make moon. A house of drummed attic playing tracks of her laugh. She tricks the room with shadow, a zigzagged heart down the middle face. Only a mother could unmake lips that leave a disappearing path. Nose can be traced back to dirt, eyes gone missing in the water behind every door she is chewing through glass thank you second poem <clears throat> um goes out to all the girls all the black girls uh if, you, if you've ever been one congrats but you have probably lived in fear of your ponytail getting cut off by a hater as soon as it reaches your shoulder. Um, it happened to me, it happens to the best of us. Um, so this is a pourquoi tale um, for the magic ponytail. A pourquoi tale um, is a, a tale of how things came to be, um, or a myth in another word. Um, so pourquoi tale of the magic ponytail. What begins as sparkle, tickled light that globes the making of black girl scalp while she is still inside. A distant sphere of glittered city is all an ultrasound can tell. When she erupts, oil spill of opalescent yolk, the people crowd swanned necks around her reveal. First, the rouged petal of ears whose color will become her. Then, like peeling up the other face of a tossed coin, black girl lifts into fluorescent affirmation by way of a dipped elbow, presented to the cooing clocks of her witnesses whose mouths make hot pink circles around predictions, collected wagers, and names of father who for a moment appeared in the smoked crystal of her design. It is here in the audit of a new black girl's scalp where a sparkle rips a bolted strand. Legends say it grow from where the silver comes from. Delicately, they read constellation in the birth slick crop, mindful of its hidden soft. They pass sparkled girl between wishing hands, only a dusting of pearled oil to anoint their own dimmed land, it is believed. This is what makes the ponytail yearn for collarbone. How black is born girls sometimes and those that remember say it feels like peppermint disco all the way down. Say that once it grew so long, it made somebody mad enough to slice it in her sleep. Um, and I have one last poem. It is a short, sweet, and to the point um, because I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to have my life changed, Alexa. Um, so this one, um, <laughs> this one is. Nothing, nothing, yes, okay, <laughs> thank God. Y'all, I have one more poem. This is, this is the time, what a time. Okay, can you hear me good and good? Okay, fabulous. Um, so the poem is titled um, Animated Lizzie's Inner Monologue. You should know Lizzie McGuire. If you don't, give Disney Plus their coin and familiar, familiarize yourself. Um, educate yourself. All right, <clears throat> Animated Lizzie's Inner Monologue. If it makes middle school less of itself, cast me, the shrouded half 
who repeats the outfit each day, her flattened dimension deadpanned into fourth wall while she wishes upon the boy who won't love us. When his shadow is sudden, my voice, a gradient ventriloquy escaping hers until want song sloshes the hallway between head and hollow. By the time her episodic ache clapboards its neon anthem, I am exhausted with being. I walk back into dusk where she began me, swallowed puppet in a silent way. I go to bed against the back of her teeth, wait for her to open. Thank y'all so, so much. Thank y'all for having me. Thank you for changing my life on this young, fine Tuesday. Um, <laughs> Alexa, please take us away. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you so, 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 so much, Kush, for sharing those amazing poems. Again, I'm hearing the lineage. I'm hearing the mothering. What was the the line, only a face a mother can unmake? Did I get that correct? I was trying to trying to keep the right, because that was my jam. I was like, oh, 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 we're getting into it. Okay, we're healing. Okay, that's what we're doing. I love it. Thank you so, so, so much, Kush. And thank you to all of our poets who have come before the next and featured poet that we are super excited to celebrate. We have been fan standing these poems for however long they've come into our lives. I feel personally always very honored and nurtured by the collaborative relationships and building that I get to do with poets that come through Haymarket. And Alexa, of course, has continued to be in that ecosystem of generous and kind, in addition to being incredibly brilliant and talented. And so I just thank you, Alexa, for coming into my life for this beautiful book. I'm glad that um, I had a part in helping to usher it out into the world. And so Alexa Patrick is a poet and vocalist, y'all, can run down, okay? Stop playing with me. Is a poet and vocalist from Connecticut. She is a Cave Conum Fellow and Tin House alumna. She has also been cast in the featured role of Unsung in We Shall Not Be Moved, an opera under the direction of the legendary Bill T. Jones. Because legends be teaching other legends in the making, right? Okay, that's what we're doing. You may find Alexa's work published in The Quarry, The Rumpus, CRWN, which I'm assuming is Crown Magazine. Very cute in the spelling. Love that semiotics. And The Breakbeat Poets, Volume 2, Black Girl Magic. Um, aside from that, again, just an incredible light and gift to the world, not only to the folks coming after her, but the folks who she is constantly in community with. Um, and so I'm just so delighted and, again, so, so honored that Alexa will be sharing these poems with us. And we are here to celebrate. This is the reason why we came to celebrate on this good Tuesday that is so good. So without further ado, please, please, please give it up and show some love to Alexa Patrick. Y'all, oh my gosh. Oh, what, am I, what am I going to do with myself? How did I get so lucky that my path has intersected with all of your paths? I just don't know, I don't know what to do. Like I, um, yeah, I was just thinking about like, how do I want to, uh, how do I want this book to enter the world? How do I want to enter the world now as a, as a human who has a book? Uh, and, you know, I was just thinking of, I just, I want to be around people who I love and admire and who have really, um, like I, I deeply believe have paved the, the way for me, who have taught me so much. Um, Raina, I remember in Obsidian when we first met, um, how we're like going through these workshops and um, anytime a book was mentioned, uh, a poet was mentioned, you were quick with the links, quick with Google, always making sure that we, uh, that we um, could dive deeper into our own knowledge, that you also like held us accountable. You're just, you're such a, um, 
I don't know. You're just you're just such a a champion for folks and a home for folks. And I remember even after Obsidian, um, when you know I live in Washington D.C. I'm not far from the Capitol. When January 6 happened, I got a little WhatsApp message from you being like, "Yo, I have a place for you to stay if you need." Um, and that is, you know, after us knowing each other really for five days. Um, but that's also, that's just kind of what you do. You make sure that people are good and that they have what they need. Um, and uh, you've taught me how to, you taught me how um, how much like community and accountability and love and family is is just central to artistry. And so I, um, I just really appreciate you, Jasmine, um, my new friend, my new sister. Um, I am just in awe of you. Uh, when you were in DC uh, about a month ago or so, um, I had the gift of watching you um, in your zone, in your space, um, and you just unapologetically knowing exactly what you wanted um, and speaking with just such truth and such conviction. Um, and you know, I, I think a lot of times as an artist, sometimes for me, like I just, I, I feel the need to apologize for asking for things and watching you just navigate how to claim a space, how to make it yours, how to make it serve your work and your art was just, it was just a masterclass. Um, also your pen is wild. It's like, it's just incredible. And I just, I really appreciate you. And I, I, I'm looking forward to continuing to learn from you. Gabe, my brother, my brother, I love you so much. Um, you are a master class yourself in tenderness. Um, we met through um, youth work essentially, because when I met you, it was for the the youth uh, reading for Split This Rock. Um, and it was when I was the slam coach for the DCU slam team. I want you to know to this very day that um, uh, many of the DCU slam team members ask me to connect you to them, <laughs> like ask me about you, ask me to reach out to you for blurbs. Like there is a tenderness in you that, um, that has a gravitational pull. Um, and that, yeah, it's just a reminder to be softer with um, myself and with the world. And I, I love you so much. Your vest is adorable. Kush, sis, my girl, like, tr it is wild that we've known each other for only two weeks. I'm, I swear, y'all, I'm going to get to the poems, but, like, this is, like, my heart has just been singing this entire time, and I just love you guys so much, and I need you to know, and I need to announce it publicly. Kush, I love you so much. You are my sister. Not the kind of sister who, like, we're, like, in the mirror uh, brushing our hair parallel to each other and, like, silently competing. Not that kind of sister. Like, the kind of sister and sister sister where we, like, switch places because one uh, one of us needs to take the science test and one's a little better at science. And then the other one's going to, like, master, like, a monologue in theater class. You know what I mean? Like, that kind of sister where we're, like, we're conspiring. Um, and I love you so much. Um, and then Erica, thank you so much for all the work that you have done to make this book's entry into the world possible. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of time with writing, it just, it's a very lonely art sometimes. And sometimes you can feel like you are alone. Um, and I know there was a particular moment when I was like trying to hustle and try to figure out like, how do I get book sales for this event and this, blah, blah, blah. and you were like, girl, no, no, uh, mm -mm. no, I got it. Send me the email. I'm doing it. Like, don't worry. You do not have to do this. You don't have to worry about this. Just worry about your book. And, and yeah, I, I just think all of you, I just, I, I am so appreciative of all of you because you remind me that I am not alone and that I'm always in community and that, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I just, I love you and my heart is just, is so full. Um, and I'm going to stop talking before I start crying. Now, I'm going to read poems. I'm just going to read poems from this book that is out today, Remedies for Disappearing. Um, I've decided I'm just going to read um, my favorite poems from the book because that's, that's just what I want to do. And this is my launch. Gosh darn it. Okay. Um, whew. Uh, this piece is called Vigilante. In the war against me, 
I am the fortress, cold, standing, around me a moat that is also me, running circles and licking dirt, cannons spitting from the roof, black as me, exploding like me, clapping through the air. In the war, the knights are me and the knights are me, riding their strong, tired horses, whose hooves are Peggio the mud, creating a song that is me. My dance card is full. Soldiers keep coming to offer their gentle hands. Men who live in my building, whose daughters went to my school, whose daughter I am, who are 20 years my senior, who aren't men yet, who have signed my checks, who against metro stations line themselves like artillery and whistle clean as exit wounds. Of course my humanity has hollowed. Mercy burned down with all the other small towns. The smoke? Yeah, that's me too. That's that piece. Um, this book is de dedicated to the vigilante aunties. Uh, the vigilante aunties are um, my grandmother and her five sisters. Uh, they were all like baddies in their own right, you know, <laughs> it's the 50s, but they're baddies. And, um, you know, but also like a little scary and a little fierce and they'll like cut you if they need to. Um, and so I learned a lot of fierceness from them, even though I didn't uh, really know them until they were gone. So this uh, this piece is is for them. It's called Sugar. Gathered like sunflowers at the breakfast table. Six sisters share a midnight. Wash down seven up cake with the kind of laughter reminding you they are in the choir. Bells in their throats like hallelujah, the sweetest thing. This before their hands cracked from prayer and spanking babies. When they pinch blood into their cheeks. Fix the lipstick, gracefully announcing the small mole they all kept at the corner of their mouths. So pretty, even their sharpest words were frosted. I come from sugar, the way a hymn comes from grief or praise. I have so many ways to return. Grease my scalp with the same oil I use for pans and find myself in a Pittsburgh kitchen. Forget everyone's name and weep because I love them. Dream of pistols under pillows. Wake up bitter about husbands I don't yet have. Every morning, a manicured finger pointing home. Grandma Jerry went first winked at my mother from the casket. Aunt Willa passed on her 102nd birthday. They all know how to make an exit, make us mourn in confection. Grace, not dead, heirloomed, like beauty mark or, or recipe, there even in the cavities left behind. Their stories coat my teeth. I too am beside them, never alone or lost, just alive with their names trailing like crumbs to God. Shout out to the vigilante aunties. Okay, um, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. Um, I live in Washington, DC. I live in Southwest, Southwest Washington, DC to be specific. Um, and where I live, there's a, a Safeway right by the Metro. It's the waterfront Safeway. Um, in front of this Safeway, this grocery store, um, there is this group of men and they're just there every day. Doesn't matter the time, <laughs> doesn't matter the weather, they are there. Uh, I have uh, learned to count on them. Um, and there's just a whole universe that is happening outside of this Safeway. Um, and I stare at them a lot and they are my muses. Uh, and so I have a series of poems and I'm going to do two from that series. Um, <laughs> this one's called The Black Men Outside the Waterfront Safeway Cat Call Me. And I'm sure it's not me who they call for. DC winters make any contact, flickering lash, a fire to put your hands over. They stand like barren trees. Crooked teeth shiver like hood castanets. Remind them of worlds other than corners. I wonder who they have at home to be tender to. If they paid the bill, 
if this small moment of devotion runs like a furnace. In this city of rush hours and new buildings, of no one here is from here anymore, even the air becomes brittle with lonely. Maybe they yell, I love you, just to hear the echo. Okay. Yeah, shout out to those guys. Also, don't catcall, but catcall if it leads to a poem. Then you can catcall. <laughs> a good, a fun poem? I don't know. Maybe don't. Never, never mind. Just kidding. Don't. Um, all right. In the next piece. Uh, the black men outside the waterfront Safeway play Lil John. Heads heavy with ones and twos. They perch outside the grocery, sucking teeth at new neighbors rushing home with LaCroix boxes, neighbors who don't make eye contact, fearing what they might find in the baseline of their brilliant irises. One makes a high hat of spit on pavement and for a moment I think a sword lily could grow there where his mouth spills, its vibrant skin reclaiming concrete. When I walk by, they call me Miss Lady, as a father might call me by my name. My chest blooms in unison with their speakers, the familiarity of its incessant clap. You'd think it is survival. Even as I walk into the store, music fading to silence, each brown face beckons a nod as if to say, we still hear it, we still hear it, we still hear. All righty, I got two more poems. So here we go. Um, I'm trying to think if I want to say something about this poem or not. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, okay, so sometimes when I got a case of the lonelies, uh, which is like every other day, um, I imagine myself as a protagonist in a Toni Morrison novel, <laughs> like a novel that maybe she, like she hadn't written yet or like one that she was like just working on, but like some woman who is wearing just like a really big hat and who like lives on a hill and just like tends to her garden and like fries tomatoes, you know what I mean? Um, and so it's become a kind of coping mechanism for me. So I could be like, okay, I'm lonely here, but in my Toni Morrison novel, I'm thriving and I'm just watering sunflowers and it's great. Um, so this poem is, uh, <laughs> is, is an attempt at talking about that. It's called Aspirational Self-Portrait as Woman Gardening in a Wide-Brimmed Hat. The sun lay heavy like a child too tired to walk. Fingertips staccato soil as, as I lift light like its mother in my wide brimmed hat. Every day and at my will, sprouts rise luminous, hum back up to an old record embellishing the quiet air. No, I'm not lonely here, alone with my chores and my chorus of living things. If any lover passes through, I feed him apple slices, seven up cake, lemonade, before demanding to be left with my own plenty. The tiny moons of mud beneath my fingernails, my singing shoulders, my feast blooming from everything I buried. Okay. I feel like I haven't exhaled yet. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know what to do with myself. Okay. Um, thank you all. Thank you for being here. Um, those in the watching and the Skypes and the YouTube universes, thank you. Um, thank you. Um, this is going to be my last piece. Uh, it is called On Disappearing. It is the last poem in the book. Here we go. On Disappearing. 
Look, the men crowd corners, gather like anomalies bloomed, a constant spring, thaw what tried to take them. They clap their hands to go-go and embers leap from their palms to emphasize the point. Signal the choir for when one don't show up. The matches of their fingers strike, lighting memories like Lucy's. And this is what I excavate in the minute it takes to walk by. Eyes still smelling like the small town I came from, still staring the way my mother taught me not to, but they're all uncle's sweat and father's shoulders, certainly. Their mamas worked alongside their mamas, certainly. I sat next to their sons on the train, certainly. They are my cousins, kissing teeth at falling buildings, pouring liquor for the fallen people, buried only to grow into our own faces. My people, stubborn die soon and become heirlooms. Legacies screaming like streetlights tell you to go home the same way they tell you to come here. And there, salt water, summer tar, slow dance, Bible verse, birthmark, bad temper, flat tire, flat line, funeral feast, sunflowers opening wide like a fire. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, again, so much for celebrating with me. Thank you, Raina. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you, Kush. Thank you, Erica. <sighs> Thank you, Mom, who's watching. I'm just <laughs> so grateful for all of you, truly, truly. Thank you so much, Alexa, for the hardest part is always the book. And I know it sounds trite, but it is true. That is the hardest part. Everything else afterwards is exactly as it should be. I am so grateful I got to hear those poems out loud. I've been sitting with them for many, many, many months, and I've been holding the secret <laughs> until I was able to say anything, which has been beautiful. Um, and so, yeah, thank you everyone who came to read this evening, Raina, especially you all the way over on the other side and other place and other places and bringing us all this wonderful, beautiful work. Kush, Jasmine, Gabriel, thank you so much for joining us in the celebration. Alexa, I hope, I hope that you have received all of this good water for that good soil. Yeah? Good. Awesome. And thank you all so much in the stratosphere. We got some love in the comments and saying, hey, baby girl, thanking everybody for supporting this book. Please, please purchase your copy of Remedies for Disappearing. And we at Haymarket will see you on the flip side. Thank you so much for joining us. And please take this tenderness into your homes with you.